Welcome to another video guys. Today I'm going to be telling you about exactly how you can expedite your US visa appointment. I understand that most of the appointments nowadays are first off not available and even if you find an appointment that's generally towards, you know, the end of the year that is 7-8 months later from what we are essentially in right now, the time we're in right now, right? And sometimes it can even be 2-3 years later. These slots are usually placeholders, even if you have them. And these are not going to help you get the appointment because they're gonna be canceled by the US Travel Docs visa team directly. So you will actually not be able to appear for the interview even if you're thinking, oh, I just wanna go after, you know, nine months, 10 months, two years, doesn't matter. These slots do not work, right? So you have to expedite your appointment. And that's essentially why these slots are available to you. Let me actually tell you exactly how you can go ahead and expedite your appointment. Let me just give you the success rates last year using some of these techniques. Our success rates were over 95% and this year I would say, I'm not saying this year, I'm going to say in the last one week or so, our success rates have increased towards somewhere around 80%. Why the drop? Essentially because the US Travel Logs team is not approving a lot of cases this year. However, at the same point of time, these success rates were somewhere close to about 50 to 60% about one month ago, but right now they are somewhere close to 80 to 85% in the in the last one week itself so i want to give you the tips and tricks for that and i'm going to tell you the methodology of course there's a lot of things involved but let's actually go over the main parts first how can you go ahead and expedite your appointment number one you have to have a placeholder appointment for instance if you look at today's date it's the 4th of may but if you take a look at the appointment confirmation of this account it's 20, it's 15th of November 2022. It's basically really far out and 99% this appointment would be cancelled for the most part. So how do you actually go ahead and work with this, right? And maybe this person actually needs to travel based on an emergency. They have to travel really, really fast. They have to actually get to the United States in the month of June or July, right? How do you actually go ahead and perform that? Well, in order to do that, you first need to have a placeholder book. You need to have an appointment book. Very important. This is essentially how the system works on the CGI Federal website. Otherwise, you will not be able to see this emergency request option until you have this placeholder. Now, booking placeholders can also be sometimes complex, but again, if you have multiple accounts, it's actually really easy. All right. Apart from that, let's say that you go ahead and you get your placeholder. You get your placeholder that is far off appointment. That's basically just a placeholder for you. Right now, you can actually click on the emergency request option. And then you're gonna see all of these cases, right? All of these cases. You have to understand, not everyone qualifies for an emergency request. In fact, in a lot of cases, what we have witnessed is people who really should qualify for it are still not qualifying for it. For instance, people who wanna travel on an H1B or they have H4 dependents and you know, maybe F1, F2 people, or sometimes they have their kids, right? They have to basically go ahead and enroll their kids into school, like these H1Bs are their dependents essentially, right? Or these F1s and their dependents. They have to enroll their kids into school. Now, if these kids are into high school or something, they have the next term coming up, they have to start school. There's really no case over here that says that, okay, your kids have to go to school, no problem, we'll qualify them for emergency, no. So a lot of critical, critical cases are still left out by the CGI federal team, but I want you to understand that there's still a lot of cases out here that you can actually go ahead and use. So in case you're qualifying, definitely try to use these. Now, ESTA denied is something that, well, not everyone can actually use. Essentially, if you're watching from India, you guys cannot use it. You're not eligible for it, right? It's basically a part of the visa waiver program. Hence, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people from different countries where basically US has basically partnered with these countries that, okay, you, you are basically eligible for the visa waiver program. Now these people can actually use this and they can go for the ESTA denied again, separate qualifications, but we're not going to talk about this so much because most countries that we work with, you know, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, there's all other countries as well that we work with, you know, in Africa, etc. But most of these countries do not really qualify for the ESTA denied. So I'm going to leave this out for the most part. Next is the student or exchange visitors. Again, you have to basically qualify for this if you have basically, you know, a program that you have to attend in the US, right? There's that, there's urgent business travel. But really, the, the main part over here is that for this business travel, there should be some reason, some company or some some organization that is basically going to lose out on a lot of money or an opportunity if you are not in the US by a particular date, which is essentially what you have to show as well. All right. So there's that's urgent business travel. There's funeral and death, which again, we have don't we really have to go over not a very common scenario, of course, right? There's 
medical needs, right? In this case, you basically have to have an appointment letter from a hospital in the US basically stating that, okay, it's an urgent procedure, urgent surgery or something like that, that you have to get in the next one or two months, whatever it is, right? And then they write you that and you actually use that over here. So again, you know, they basically, you have to show the finances, you can afford it, etc., etc. It's a very complex scenario in most cases. But if you get it, it's a great, great thing. Okay, now, First, like I said, you have to basically qualify for one of these cases. Whichever your cases, make sure to read this very, very carefully. If you're working with us, of course, you can always connect with us and our team can help you understand if you qualify or not, which I would say is a very, very helpful resource. Just give us a call and get started understanding your case if possible. Point number three, very important over here, you have to understand that you are in the emergency appointment request period. You can actually go ahead and apply. A lot of cases, even if you apply for emergency appointments, but you're not in that time period of emergency, your request will be denied, okay? And guess what? In 99% of the cases when they deny requests, in fact, actually 100% of the cases, we've done 3,000 plus cases, we deal with, you know, at least a dozen or two dozen emergency appointments almost every single week, and we calculate the rates and everything, you know, what is basically, you know, the success ratio and all of that. So we know exactly how it goes, and I'm telling you, there are certain cases where you have to wait a couple of days as well. For instance, right, if you're a student, very common scenario, and you have your program start date in August, right, you cannot apply for emergency right now. Understand this, because you can only do it within 60 days of your program start date, all right? So basically 60 days before, if you're working with us, we, our team will basically send you an email that, look, from today you start qualifying. And you can go ahead and apply with us, right? So it's very important that you understand this. It's very urgent, and if you're leaving out even the small detail that within 60 days you have to do it and you're excited that, oh, I have my Form I-20 or I have my DS-2019 and I have evidence that I paid my service fee, I am eligible, I'll go ahead and apply, chances are you'll get a rejection. And even after, you know, making sure that everything you're doing is correct, you can still get a rejection and they don't have to provide you a reason, which is absolutely awful. It doesn't make sense and we don't like it, but it is how they have made it. So make sure that you're trying your very best to qualify in every single front. Point number four, very, very important over here. You have to clarify exactly why you qualify, okay? And that's essentially over here. When you click here to request an emergency appointment, right, you will be basically sent to this form. You have to give a brief explanation of your emergency. Very, very important over here. If you do not do it right, and if you're working with us, you would already have a template and everything available on your dashboard. But if you do not do this completely well, right, if you, if you basically miss out important details or you're not mentioning things in the proper manner, chances of rejection are extremely, extremely high. In fact, this is essentially where you can expect the biggest mistake that you can make over here, really, right? It's easy to make mistakes over here, so make sure that you get it reviewed by someone who has done it before, if possible. If not, try to make sure that you're including every single thing and explain, all right? But again, you cannot write too much over here. Don't make it too long as well. Make it, keep it concise, but at the same point of time, make sure that you're getting the point through and you're getting everything important included in this box, okay? It's very, very important. Make sure that you're choosing the right emergency reason. For instance, if you have an urgent, urgent business travel, you should do that. And then you should upload the attachments. Very important over here. Which brings me to my point number five, that you have to collect the documents which would be acting as proof, okay? For instance, in business travel, you have to prove that a company would be having a significant loss if you're not in the US by this date. You have to show the documents. The company should show that, okay, this is why this is going to happen and this is why we require this person to come in. So you have to tell the government over there that, look, this is the reason, this is, it's all genuine, here's all the proof, and you should go ahead and approve this request, right? So this is the most important part over here. And if you're again working with us, we would advise you on the documents you can use, etc., etc. All of that is already covered with us, right? But at the same point of time, there's a lot of small mistakes that you can have, right? For instance, you can write the wrong tentative travel date. You may just write something like 10 days later, but on your DS-160, you've written maybe something that is 30 days later which again is an inconsistency. So there's a lot of small mistakes you can make over here. That's why we recommend taking export help. For instance, up till last year, US Travel Docs used to prefer that if you are basically applying for an emergency, you should have the appointment at your nearest consulate as well, which has not been a huge issue this year, at least for for us, at least, you know, because they haven't also been opening, you know, many, many emergency appointments for all the consulates. But at the same point of time, you know, you should still have all of that flexibility. You should keep that, okay, this point, you should keep in mind because you can only apply for this emergency request twice, all right, per MRV fee. And the thing is, if you exhaust that option, right, if you exhaust that option and you 
file both the times incorrectly, then you just have to wait for the bulk openings, which makes it extremely, extremely hard for you to get a slot. So make sure that you're not wasting this option work with someone on this if possible. If you're interested, we can even help you. You can go on to wangrad.com, go on to the Visa application help section. We cover everything end to end and there's no extra charges of any sort. So just in case you know you wanna work with us, everything end to end is covered and we have extremely great success ratios in case you'd be interested. But again, coming back to the form, make sure that you're doing everything right. If you have doubts, make sure that you're doing your research, all right? And I look forward to working with you. If you need more information on this, you can always reach out to me on Instagram and make sure to follow me over there so that I can basically help you in the best possible way. All right, looking forward to working with you. Subscribe to the channel for more such helpful content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.